So I, I'm going to turn now to our first speakers from WIAM, the Palestinian Conflict Transformation Center. WIAM offers community-based programs for children and youth and women, including income generation, legal training, and workshops on human rights. And WIAM works with a women's shelter. It runs weekly women's groups at the center, as well as several m groups that uh, meet in several of the marginalized vi villages in the West Bank. And we were able to uh, have an opportunity to interchange with some of those women and groups while we were there. So we're, I, I, the word is honored, uh, and it is a deep uh, and lasting honor for us to be partners with WIAM as Kairos. And so I will turn it over to our friends at WIAM uh, to hear from them on the context and the particular issues facing uh, Palestine in this moment. Thank you very much. You are humbling us, actually. I would like to say thank you a lot for your compassion, for your empathy and sincere partnership. This is giving us hope and always renewable hope. Mahatma Gandhi says, truth never damages a cause that is just. And so our call and our talk will be about justice and as we are involved in this issue, we are talking about restorative justice that redresses the wrongs rather than avenging them. So we are happy to be in this Zoom and to continue our uh, discussion and to help to raise awareness here and there, as well as to go in the less troubled road for justice. You know, we am is a grassroots organization and it is based on community-based society and family is the viable socio-economic unit. And at WIAM, as a result of COVID-19, as a result of the threat of annexation, we haven't sit silent and idle at home. We work diligently with the people, whether in the office or outside the office or at our homes, from our homes. Our homes become our offices when there is lockdown. So what we do is we do a lot of psychosocial support for communities, for individuals by phone, as well as face to face. We mediate a lot of conflict, you know, with this kind of prison more conflict increased. So we try to solve conflict amicably between people. And third, try to provide some support of food, help, hygiene to the affected, afflicted uh, families and people. And we continue to do that with a spirit of openness, with a spirit that we are here to serve the people, no matter who are the people without discrimination about gender, sex, religion, uh, family, uh, political affiliation, religious affiliation. And we continue to do that despite that this big prison becomes a small prison. And the threat of annexation is at the door. And you know, people talk about annexation as if it is a new thing. No, it is not a new thing. Since 1967, the state of Israel has, you know, continued to do annexation from annexing East Jerusalem in 1980 and considered the eternal unified capital of Israel going to the wall, uh, you know, which uh, took almost 19% of the West Bank up to this today. We are not talking about annexation as the problem we are happy to end the occupation. When there is no occupation, there is no more annexation. And we can live together, uh, people in the Middle East, side by side, with our rights guaranteed and rendered. Now, you know, with the COVID, 
you know, cases are increasing. So far in the Palestinian area, we have more than 5,105 cases with 25 people dead and 171 Palestinian died in diaspora. Shows that the importance to have a home. That doesn't mean if we have a home that the death toll will be less, but at least we are much more comfortable. Nowadays with the COVID, we feel that we are separated from the whole world too. And uh, with the annexation threat, another, you know, a nightmare for us. Before I go on, but let me remind you with the people in small prison. Since March 5, there are more than 900 new prisoners since March 5 this year. And uh, since 1967, 69 people died in prison as a result of medical neglect. So what we are looking for, emancipation. We want to be free from the small prison and the big prison.